Hey guys, what's going on? Today's video, I'm going to be reviewing what I think is the most capable capture card ever. And so this is your boy Proto and a review of the Epifan AVIO HD. Now before we start, I just want to say that they did send this to me for review, but no way, shape or form have they influenced my opinions on this. So this is still going to be a no BS review and I just thought that you guys should know that. I'm not sponsored by them in any way either. And with that out of the way, in this video I'll be unboxing it, taking a look at its features, and also giving my over impressions of it, as well as how it's been holding up for my use. Anyway, a lot to cover, so sit back and enjoy. So taking a look at the product, the box is covered in simple and clean text, and the information it gives you is nice as well. Sides are nothing special, but the back also gives you a brief overview of the product, but that's not why we're here. Now if you unwrap the plastic film on the side cover, you'll greet with a box containing all the goodies, and the box opens up really easily to expose a quick start guide, which you're not going to need, and then some help on registering the product as well. Now you do get the extra device, which, you know, sort of what you're paying for, which is a lot smaller than I thought. You also get some cables being the USB 3.0 cable to connect to your PC, a DVI to DVI cable, VGA to DVI, if you're still using that, and DVI to HDMI adapter. That said, it would have been nice to just include outright a HDMI to DVI cable, or just a standard HDMI cable, since many devices still use and require HDMI and less so VGA D-Sub. So I've broken this down the same as all my other reviews being look, slash design, build quality, features, setup, and now I've added a comparison and technical overview. Starting with the design and the looks of this, it is really superb. It's extremely small, much smaller than the Elgato, coming in at 90mm by 60mm by 23mm. Images on screen now should show you a comparison between the original HD and the AVIO. Now this is really great if you're on a really small portable device that captures video on the go. Also, if you're more of a home user, the fact that it's really small makes it a lot easier to hide or pack into small places, meaning it's less obtrusive on your desk. The shape of it is similar to the original Gato, and besides being obviously a lot smaller, it also has a DVI on one side to connect to your equipment that you want captured, and then a USB Type-B to USB 3.0 connector on the back to connect to your PC. If you didn't know or weren't listening properly, the USB connector is backwards compatible with USB 2.0 if you have an older motherboard, and the DVI connector can be changed to HDMI, VGA, D-Sub or DVI, ready to support any source, even including audio. In terms of build quality, the AVIO HD is nothing short. This has a metal enclosure and there you are paying a premium for things like this. And the colour doesn't come off, even when you try and scratch it with your nails. And it's almost as if the green and white visible on the outside has been powder blasted to give a nice textured feel, which still feels smooth and premium. Both connectors do feel solid and durable with the cables being nothing special and I would have liked to have the USB Type-B cable black to better match the rest but again that isn't a deal breaker and if it bothers you, you can just buy the same type of cable in black from Amazon or somewhere like that. Screws are besides both connectors and there's also a notification light which tells you whether you're connected etc. Very nice Epifan. Now for features, there's an absolute ton. Okay so first off it is driverless and requires no software installation so imagine this to be treated like a webcam for your PC, it gets recognised by your PC allowing you to easily embed it into camera apps, in Windows, or other software such as OBS, Wirecast, XSplit, etc. As a result, the only limitations on your PC is whether it can actually handle a software like OBS, rather than the actual device. And so setting this thing up is really easy as well, and I'll cover that later, and it also captures full HD at 1080p 60fps. This, by the way, is uncompressed as well, so you're not limited by compression that the Elgato software does. On YouTube, it won't be that noticeable, but it becomes a lot more apparent if you're planning to do a lot of upscaling beyond 1080p, or if you plan on using other sources such as a camera and the rest. As mentioned before, the AVIO does capture audio over HDMI and the device automatically upscales and downscales as well as handles aspect ratios and even does deinterlacing. It handles all of that within its own hardware to make the least impact on your computer. And as a result, a laptop for streaming may be easier. Another feature is that it's really lightweight at only 150 grams and easily fits into a pocket or rucksack. Guess that's only really important if you're travelling, going to events, a friend's house, or you're just limited in space, so you can just stick it into your pocket while recording. And jokes aside, it's not only durable, but also really nice looking. Though that is subjective, and while some of you might think that the green clashes with itself, it's nothing bad. And like other external capture cards like the Elgato, it's noiseless and powered over USB. Now another feature is that it works with Windows, Linux, and if you're unfortunate enough to have to own an Apple Mac, this will work too. And one thing that really caught my eye when testing this and using this device is the fact that there's virtually no delay. Now I used OBS and found that at 1080p 60fps, there genuinely was only a tiny amount of delay when recording from a laptop. And this isn't even a very good laptop, which makes syncing a webcam, mic and gameplay for streaming really easy. This also means that a preview window when you're streaming or recording is pretty much instant. Now with features out the way, we move on to setup. Now I will be honest and say that if you're experienced or an enthusiast in tech, you're going to love it. And if you're not, then this won't be as simple. 
Now for recording and streaming, it's not as plug in and play as the Elgato, mostly due to the AVIO not having a dedicated software, so you will have to google OBS settings and the like. That said, whilst OBS does look a bit intimidating to begin with, it will take about half an hour or so to understand a lot of this stuff, and once you do, it is so much better than the Elgato software, so I really wouldn't worry about this. Now there are plenty of tutorials online about streaming with OBS and people who have an Elgato often prefer to use it to the Elgato software. With some settings changed, OBS multi-platform also has flashback recording ability, which I think they call the recording buffer. An actual setup if you're using a HDMI source from a camera or any other source from a PC, though you don't need to buy anything extra, but if you want to record console gameplay from your Xbox One or PS4, then you will have to unfortunately buy a HDMI splitter since this device doesn't have video pass-through. Setup will be on screen now. But let's see if everything's sorted, and for PC recording, you can just connect HDMI or DVI into your graphics card, and then USB 3.0 into a USB 3.0 slot, and then just go into display, control panel, and then duplicate the displays. This is because the AVIO is picked up as a screen, and when you do that, you're basically just duplicating it. And obviously, it'll duplicate everything else on your screen. Now from here, it works wonders. Now you can also just use a 1-in, 2-out HDMI splitter to record, and if you want to record console gameplay, just plug the USB 3.0 into your PC and then connect DVI to HDMI adapter onto the AVIO HD. Connect the splitter to the console, and with one of the outputs, wire up to your monitor, and with the other one, just connect to the AVIO HD. If you're paying attention, you'll notice that it does split the signal, and from here, just open OBS and set up the scene for recording. And I know it probably sounds really confusing if you're on the other end trying to understand this, but it really isn't, and hopefully the images on screen helped a bit. Also, if you're a beginner and you don't know what you're doing, Trust me, the setup is still really easy. And when you've configured it once in OBS, you won't have to ever do it again. You can also create different profiles in OBS and scenes for streaming and recording. All in all, OBS is a little bit more complicated, but if you've got patience, it'll be much more impressive and boost your production quality by a sh ton, regardless of what capture card you use. Now for this, compared to the Elgato HD60 Pro, the AVIO HD is everything the HD60 Pro does, except from recording uncompressed quality for both video and audio versus the Elgato's compressed. It also has a large range of inputs, being driverless and portable. Now, there's also a few other things like being able to accept VGA signal and not having any of the glitching problems with your recording. For example, sometimes the Elgato has a hiccup with the recording where you get screen tearing, audio out of sync. And whilst it doesn't matter too much since it really doesn't happen often, it's still pretty annoying, whereas this, I've had no problem. Then again, I've only had it for a month, so time may show, but again, no problems at the moment. Now compared to the regular HD60, basically all the features are listed above except from the fact that the AVIO is also portable. And the reason the HD60 Pro is the go-to one for streaming is because of its almost zero latency compared to the HD and the HD60s, which both have 3 second delays as you'll see in the Elgato software. Now the AVIO does give you the best of both worlds capturing uncompressed quality for extreme detail and being both portable and having near zero delay. Also, this is a USB 3.0 compatible device, compared to the HD60's USB 2.0, which means more data can be transferred and so you can push higher bit rates and therefore quality. And so to conclude this comparison, if you're interested in making videos and uploading them to YouTube, then something like the Elgato is certainly great and a lot cheaper, but if you're interested for the feature that this has, then you should definitely weigh up both devices. So for the pros that captures HDMI, VGA and DVI devices, it's also extremely reliable, portable and small and captures uncompressed video and audio quality through the lossless codec. Even though if you want to, you can reduce the bitrate to reduce file sizes. And there is also complete control over compression, file formats and the rest through OBS. And there's virtually no delay. I was using it through OBS and I'd say it was less than half a second and not to forget that it's driverless. I've also found that it's much more robust since it is made of aluminium and records up to 1920 by 1200 at 60 fps so it will do 1080p as 60fps. Customer support is excellent as well and it works fan fantastically for streaming. Lastly, it automatically has just scaling, aspect ratio and I do believe interlacing too. And this is where we get onto the cons. Now I'll start with the most noticeable being the price. You can pick this thing up for around £250 to select retailers, which is about £100 more expensive than the HD60 Pro. Now you are going to have to weigh up for yourselves whether you think the flexibility of combining the best between the HD60 and HD60 Pro as well as uncompressed audio and video is well worth it. For most people, the Elgato will still be amazing, but if you've got the money, or you're a YouTuber who does a lot of events or streams, this is still a really good choice. Another one is that for noobs, the initial setup does seem to be a lot less plug and play than the Elgato, which for the most part is the case. You can use the Elgato with OBS too, so if you're looking at a simple plug and play option, this may not be it, but if you've got half an hour to learn OBS and want flexibility, then you've found it. 
Also, this doesn't have video pass-through. Now, this isn't too much of a big deal, but since it doesn't have it, it would have been nice to have seen an included HDMI splitter with one input and two output. I'm sure for a larger scale production of a splitter, it costs almost nothing, and so if I was paying this much money to record console, it would have been great to see one, rather than having to go out and buy one separately. PC folks and camera guys are all golden straight out of the box. And there's not including a HDMI cable. Now I don't want to talk crap, especially since this product is well ahead of the market, but if you want to output HDMI from a PC or a console, you will have to buy a separate cable. And so that's pretty much it. Overall, I think the cons aren't deal breakers, besides the price, which will put a lot of people off. But then again, if you really want to take this to the next level, then portability, paired with no latency, and uncompressed quality makes it an excellent choice. But I can't stress enough that for most people on a budget, look at alternatives. Now I know it's not for everyone, if you do want to make YouTube videos, then it'd still be a good idea to look at cheaper options, because you might not need all of these features. But if you're listening up a fan, which I'm sure you are, I would really consider creating a recorder, which better matches the Elgato in price, since most people don't have enough money to fork out and buy this device compared to the Elgato, which many more people would justify buying. And as you can see, your price does make a huge difference. I'm extremely happy with this product, and it is a lot more feature-rich than the Elgato's flagship, but creating a more limited version specifically for gamers and simple content creators, rather than healthcare, military or aerospace professionals, would attract more people. The product is amazing, but for gamers and YouTubers who want something simple, we'll probably go with the Elgato, just because of the price and the simpler software, rather than having to learn OBS, even though I get it, it can be used the same way as a webcam. Anyway guys, hopefully you liked this review, and if you did, give it a thumbs up and tell me what you thought about the capture card. I know you can't physically hold it, but if you have any pointers for what you'd like in a capture card, then give it a shout out. Anyway, thanks for watching, this is Proto, adios.